drifts slowly northwards with some slow strengthening over the weekend. You are listening to Weather Radio, WSL 47, operating on a frequency of 162.40 megahertz and broadcasting continuous weather information as a service to the public. The board Mothers have to see the values received from sports, and mothers, we dedicate this game to you. Number two, Earl Phillips and his mother, Mrs. Dello Phillips. Number eight, Greg Latham and Mrs. Sharon Latham. Number 10, Brian Self and Miss Geraldine Self. Number 11, Jim Laughlin uh, and Mrs. Joanne Laughlin. Number 12, Scott Carmody, Mrs. Linda Carmody. Number 14, Greg Grant, with Mrs. Hattie Grant. Number 21, Brad Anderson and Mrs. Sherry Coleman. Number 23, Matt Heckemeyer and Mrs. Betty Heckemeyer. 24, Gary Ellis and Mrs. Judy Ellis. 27, Ken Latham and Mrs. Alice Latham. Number 30, Derek Tennant and Mrs. Sue Watkins. Number 32, Brian Price and Mrs. Peggy Price. Number 33, Keith Buck and Mrs. Judy Buck. Number 34, Barry Becker and Mrs. Carolyn Brownfield. Number 35, Mark Wiggins and Mrs. Dorothy Wiggins. Number 36, Mark Geralds and Mrs. Elizabeth Geralds. Number 40, Keith Blissett and Mrs. Maxine Blissett. Number 42, Chris Taylor and Mrs. Jackie Taylor. Number 45, Dennis Bean and Mrs. Mary Bean. Number 48, Mike Brashears, and Mrs. Sue Brashears. 49, Jim Perkins, Mrs. Shirley Perkins. Number 51, Mark Hamra and Mrs. Catherine Hamra. 52, Jeff Lester and Mrs. Marie Lester. Number 55, Chimp Thornton and Mrs. Lynn Thornton. Number 56, Ron Baker and Mrs. Margaret Lee. 57, Paige Blanton and Mrs. Michelle Blanton. Number 59, Robert Yokely and Mrs. Marie Yokely. Number 92, Ron Sells and Mrs. Annie Sells. Number 61, David Newton and Mrs. Bonnie Newton. Number 62, John Limbaugh, Mrs. Dottie Limbaugh. Number 63, Darren Eby and uh, <coughs> Mrs. Diane Rogers. Number 64, Willie Gillespie and Mrs. Dorothy Gillespie. Number 65, Joe Sevick, Mrs. Fran Robinson. Number 66, John McCauley, Mrs. Ethel McCauley. Number 67, Byron Dillon and Mrs. Wanda Dillon. Number 68, Tom McClarty, Mrs. Betty McCallie. Number 69, Shelley Crowley, Mrs. Wilma Crowley. Number seven, 70, Jay Greenwood and Mrs. Mary Ellen Keene. Number 71, Tom Pruitt and Mrs. Electra Pruitt. Number 72, Brian Nickel 
and Mrs. Judy Nickel. Number 74, Dana Carter, Mrs. Devane Lambert. Number 75, Stacy Deal, Mrs. Wanda Deal. Number 76, Tim Graham, Mrs. Debbie Graham. Number 77, Rodney Hurt, Mrs. Paula Gozo. Number 78, Brent King, Mrs. Connie Borders. Number 79, Mark Caldwell, Mrs. Betty Caldwell. Number 80, Darrell Wasson, Mrs. Ruth Ann Wasson. Number 82, James Washington, Mrs. Cleotha Washington. 84, Brad Oftenberg and Mrs. Judy Oftenberg. Number 85, Joe Fetch, Mrs. Pat Fetch. Number 86, uh, didn't make it. 86, Tyrone Marshall, Mrs. Perlene Marshall. 89, David Freeman, Mrs. Pat Freeman. Number 95, Sean Eubanks and Mrs. Wanda Eubanks. Number 98, Andy Stone, Mrs. Charlotte Stone. Manager John Harris, Mrs. Linda Harris. Manager Mike Kochnauer, Mrs. Lois Kochnauer. Let's give all these moms a great big hand.
presenting the 1984 Saxton Freshman Marching Band, directed by Mr. Ed Callan. The 1984 freshman drum major is Shelley Meeks. We now feature the freshman percussion ensemble in Can Can.
The tourers for the 1984 Saxon Freshman Marching Band are Lori Davis. Sarah Jarvis. And Lisa Davis. Will you please stand for the playing of our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation by David Conley.
Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, who is the creative source of all life, grant us your presence as we assemble here this evening. Be with those who participate in this event that they may be kept free from injury of body and of spirit. And may we all be so aware of your presence that whether in victory or in defeat, we may rejoice and celebrate the life you have given, the freedom of our nation, and the fellowship we have shared with the others gathered here. Above all else, may our spirits be guided by your spirit of peace, hope, and goodwill. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Public School Stadium as the Saxton High School Bulldogs take on the Kirkwood Pioneers. George, you got any thoughts on tonight's game? Well, Jim, it's a windy night. Uh, hopefully the rain is going to stay away. Uh, we don't have much of a crowd. Uh, we do look for an awfully good football game. Uh, Kirkwood's bringing a, a very good football team in here from what we can read in the paper. Uh, a very big football team, that is, size-wise. Uh, they're one and zero on the season. Of course, the Bulldogs are two and zero, so uh, we don't know. We'll find out in a few minutes. If uh, the number of coaches are any indications, they've got uh, looks like eight coaches to our three, and that or four, uh, and that's been sometimes a, a question whether uh, we've got a sufficient number to do all of the things that you want to do. Obviously, the the greater in number, the the more things that you can do. Uh, by the same token, you've got a school that's what uh, twice, uh, three times as big as uh, yeah, it's, it's Sykeson. Bigger, bigger than Sykes, and I don't know how much. And, and definitely, Jim, you're right there. The more coaches you have, the more individualized instruction you can give. You can break down the different facets of the game. And uh, if you've got an individual coach to work with seven or eight kids there, that's definitely to your advantage. The Bulldogs will receive. They'll be defending the South Goal. They'll be going from right to left on your screen. The Kirkwood Pioneers will thus be defending the north goal. And in the first quarter, they'll have the wind to their back. Uh, basically, it's a little cross field wind, but it's coming from the out of the northeast going to the southwest. Uh, Jim, there's another factor tonight that we might look at. Tonight is mom's night. Those of you that tuned in early enough saw the parade of moms and players coming in. This is the 12th mom's night that the Bulldogs have hosted. This started back, uh, Coach Terry Smith started this. Uh, and the Bulldogs have won 11 of the past 11 Moms Nights, and this is the 12th. I think, though, in the past, the Moms Nights have been maybe against Perryville and Dexter <laughs> and Kennett, but uh, they've really picked a dandy tonight. If that's any inspiration to the Bulldogs to, to go out and win this game, Moms Night may be the factor. This is it, isn't it? Uh, we'll kind of give you the lineups as we go along here. Deep is, uh, is that Carmody Deep? Yeah, Carmody Deep. As they kick it, uh, Carmody takes it on the five as he comes down the middle. He gets a break and he goes across the 25. He's still up and he crosses the 25 up to about the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. They we'll just tried to wedge that right up the middle. Excuse me, Jim, Excuse uh, with Carmody uh, in the deep part. Uh, the wedge kind of bogged down there a little bit as the Pioneers came in and, and broke down some of the beginning wedge. But uh, Sykes and will start now first and 10. The offensive lineup for the Bulldogs will be number 92 at tight end, Ron Sells. He's a 175-pound junior. At the other end position is Matt Heckemeyer. He's number 23. He's a 165-pound senior. The strong side tackle is Jay Greenwood, 250-pound senior, wearing number 70. At the strong side guard is Tom Pruitt, 225-pound senior. He'll be wearing number 71. As you see, well, let's see, they picked up what? About... Uh, Six, seven yards on that first run, didn't they? Yeah, they gave that to the workhorse, Dennis Bean, who went right in behind Greenwood and Pruitt off the right side for a nice pickup on a first down. The center will be Mark Hammer. He's 175-pound senior and wears number 51. As the Bulldogs are in the eye again, they give to uh, Bean. He breaks loose, and he gets a first and 10 easy as he crosses the 50-yard line down 
I think he's about going to mark that to 48. Yeah, 48 yard line, just shy of the 50. The weak side guard is Jeff Lester. He's a 210 pound senior. He'll wear number 52. Number 74 is the weak side tackle. He's Dana Carter. He's 215 pound junior. The wing back will be number 12, Scott Carmody, 165 pound senior. Wait a minute, we've got a timeout here. A little get equipment the readjustment, I think. Okay. The uh, split end is number 14, Greg Grant. He's 145 pound junior. The quarterback is number 10, Brian Self. Uh oh, we're going to have a, somebody jump there. Kirkwood jumped whether they were uh, they were not drawn offside, so that would cost the Pioneers five. That's a good way to pick up five, isn't it? Yes, it is. To complete the lineup, number 27 is the fullback. He's Keith uh, Ken Latham. He's a 175-pound senior, and the tailback is number 45, Dennis Bean, 195-pound senior. So we've just started the first quarter. Bulldogs are moving it in the first offensive series. Out of the eye, they give to Bean again as he slips outside, and he'll pick up maybe two yards. That'll make it a second and uh, about three yards to go. Dogs aren't doing anything fancy yet. Uh, basic stuff straight off tackle. Uh, have, they've had some success so far. The, the quick opener may be the best route to go against a good team, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Some of those big people may not be quite as quick off the ball, so the, the quick openers may work. Self gives to Bean again as he slips outside, goes off tackle. He's still going, and he picks up the first and 10 as he goes down to the 35 and maybe just across it. That was one comment I read in the newspaper that the Kirkwood coach made a comment. He's, they've only played one game. I think that was against Parkway South last week in which they won 27 to nothing. But he said, we didn't face a Dennis Bean in that football game. And of course, he, like everybody else, should be aware that Dennis is, is one of the top running backs uh, in southeast Missouri, maybe in the state. We'll see as the season progresses. So he's got to be awfully uh, aware of Dennis Bean, and he's got to be the key as Dennis going off the field now. Looks like he's had helmet problems. Uh, looks like the uh, official told him to go on off and get his helmet fixed. They send Carmody in in place of Bean. So Carmody will be the tailback as the Bulldogs are in the eye. They're running an unbalanced line. Looks like a fumble there, and they're still after the ball. Self, uh, no, it looks like Kirkwood got it. Kirkwood comes up with a ball, number 86 for the uh, Kirkwood. Comes up with a ball. That's Sterling Hicks. Well, Jim, that's one thing you hate to see so early in a football game. Sykes and hadn't made too many turnovers in the first two games. But uh, in a big game like this, this early, you hate to see that fumbled snap and turnover uh, right now. Both schools have the same colors tonight, uh, the red and the white. Kirkwood opens up with the uh, split backfield. Split on each end. We'll give you the Kirkwood offense here very quickly. And the give is to their tailback as he slants off the left side. Uh, Size-wise, uh, the Kirkwood backfield is awfully big. That was Anthony Vaughn, a 205-pound halfback, which is a senior. Their quarterback has gotten all of the newsprint. Tom Poholsky, uh, a major college prospect from what we read. I think the University of Missouri may be looking at him, but uh, he's a big kid. He weighs in at 200 pounds. They certainly are, and they're looking at Spragans also. Uh, they like both of those boys. Again, they open in the split. Looked like it was offsides. They split in on the far side. Looks to me like as he goes way down, but I believe it'll be called back because I believe the uh, split end on the far side looked like he started a little early. Yeah, it's a good gainer for Kirkwood, but uh, that was the split end did leave too quick, and that play will be called back. That will be offside. It shows uh, the offsides on Kirkwood. Both offensive plays, it has appeared to me that when Pahoski's gone under the center, he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. At least that's the impression that he gives as he looks up and down the line uh, as he might be changing the play. And that's a real potent weapon, particularly in high school, isn't it? Yeah, if he's got that ability at this point to look over those defenses and to adjust and change the play at the line of scrimmage, that uh, it may be a long night for us if he can read the defenses that well. It makes it a second and about 11 for the Kirkwood Pioneers. 
We've got 8-10 left in the first quarter. There's no score. We'll give you the lineup here in a minute as he raises up for a quick out pass, and it bounces. He catches again. It was for number 89, and he breaks two tackles as he popped out of bounds by number 24. That's uh, Gary Ellis of the Bulldogs. Sterling Hicks was on the end of that pass from Prohoski, which uh, he raised right up pretty quick and just fired a, a pretty good bullet right out to the side. The Kirkwood offense is at the tight end is Charles Duncan. He's number 39. He was 180 pound junior. The uh, left tackle is Michael Spragans. He's 240 pound junior. He's number 77. And number you mentioned he's another one that the University of Missouri they had looked at, at as him, a and they're also looking at the this Michael Weber, uh, the 200 uh, pound, pound uh, senior. As a quarterback just sneaks off to the left side and he rolls after he gets there. Let's see how much they give him on that roll. Kind of a strange play for middle of the field on first and ten. He, he did pick up two or three yards, but not very creative there. Sure wasn't. That makes it a second and about eight. Uh, the left tackle. Let's see. We're at the left guard. That's Tom Eames, 210 pound junior. The center is Jason Moeller, a 200 pound senior. The right guard is Ken Pullman, a 185-pound senior. The right tackle is Michael Weber, a 270-pound senior. The uh, split in is Sterling Hicks, a 185-pound senior. The pitch is to the halfback on the far side. As he gets around the corner, and he's gone, boys. He's gone as he's down to the 10, the 5, and into the end zone as he got outside in a hurry. Now that was Michael Simmons, and unfortunately, I see no yellow flags on the field for the Bulldogs right now, so they have dropped behind real quick. The flanker is Aaron Hughes, 175-pound junior. The quarterback is Tom Polsky. He's a 200-pound senior. The halfbacks are Anthony Vaughn, 205-pound senior, and Michael Simmons, who just made the touchdown, 190-pound junior. So we've got six on the board for Kirkwood with 7-0-1 left in the first quarter. Chris to Crew, a left-footed soccer-style kicker, attempts the extra point. It's up and good. The holder for the Pioneers is Paul Thompson, 175-pound junior. Well, so Kirk Kirkwood has taken that first turnover, and they've taken it right down the field for a score, something that you, you didn't want to happen. Uh, against a team as powerful apparently as Kirkwood is you don't want to drop too far behind so this offensive set from the Bulldogs is going to be important they've got to bounce back and move the football again as they did until they turned it over I think that's the key uh, they're going to have to watch the turnovers maybe they're a little uh, sometimes they're a little in awe of the big schools and the publicity that's given to them well again it's the big city coming to the country of that's course right. we don't feel like we're in the country but I'm sure the city boys think that they've come down to the country now to play football but uh, and being from St. Louis, there may be a little factor there, but uh, I, don't, I think that used to be a little more true a couple of years ago until the Bulldogs have, have beaten Ladue a time or two now, and I don't think the, the big St. Louis thing is quite as important or has as much bearing as it used to. And it's a, you know, there is a considerable size difference. Uh, we are, I guess, the smallest school in the 5A uh, yeah, because we've, Popper we've, Bluff and, and Cape Central are both uh, a little bigger than we are. Yeah, we just barely, from what I understand, get have enough students to get into the 5A bracket. So when you start playing on that level, you're going to be playing schools that are in the 4,000. Yeah, unlimited. Uh, there, there's yeah. no top figure in that in 5A. It's just unlimited. And I think uh, several of those schools in the St. Louis area are in the three and 4,000 student category. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So the Bulldogs take it. We've got a. Not sure what we're doing. I guess we, uh, was that an official timeout? Uh, I don't I see, see any of the George. coaches. Yeah, I don't see any of the coaches coming over. That must have been. Maybe it's equipment. There is an official there in the middle of the Kirkwood team uh, working on shoulder pads or something. Okay. Bulldogs are ready to go as they are on about the 27 or 8 yard line. The ball is to Bean and he's given it. He tries the middle, tries to cut back outside to his right, and he'll pick up, uh, what, three or four yards. 
Yeah, it's obvious from the outset, as is it going to be most every game, that Dennis is going to do the bulk of the uh -huh. ball carrying. And if, if he's able to run and pick up yardage like this, then, you know, the Bulldogs can get the ball down the field and get back in this. Yes, if, uh, particularly if they can uh, use Latham enough and a pass enough to mix it up so that they just can't totally key on him. Right. A give is to... As they did that time. That's right. They just they gave to uh, Dennis, and he tried to slant off the right side off the guard, and uh, they were all waiting for him then, weren't they? Yeah, no gain on that play. It'll be third and long. You would anticipate a pass play here. Jim, I thought we commented on it last week and looking over the, the starting lineups. I believe the Bulldogs have got eight or nine players going both ways tonight. Kirkwood has none. They're playing 22 people, 11, of course, on offense, 11 uh -oh. on defense. But the Bulldogs are, are playing eight or nine people both ways. And uh, whether that has any effect or not, I don't know. But again, pointing back to what you say, that they may have so many more kids to choose from that they, they can put 22 quality players on the field. And that makes a lot of difference, uh, particularly as we come down to the that fourth quarter and it's been a hard fought ball game. Yeah, you're definitely right. The one saving grace tonight could be the, the little cooler weather. Uh, yeah, it's not extremely hot. It's, it's good football weather to play in if the if the gale would just slow down a little bit. Yeah, the that would be the one problem that the Bulldogs would have is the pass would be going into the wind. Particularly trying to play catch up here. They're in the eyes. They put the split to the right as self just overshoots. It looks like it was intended for Ken Latham, but overshoots him. So it will be a punting situation. Fourth and uh, about 11 yards for the Bulldogs. Carmody will be punting into this crosswind. Uh, he didn't have to punt too much last week. Uh, two weeks ago in Blyville, he got off some good punts, but uh, with the wind tonight, this may be a factor. Yeah, that's this kind of one of those tough things. You keep the ball down while they, they're they able to uh, pick it up in a hurry and run. Now there's down, but he fell on it as he fumbled it. Greenwood was down there. Oh, excuse me, that was Dana Carter who was down there in a hurry. Number 22 for Kirkwood, Derek Scott made contact with the punt, fumbled but immediately got back on it. The Pioneers will start this series from their own 48 yard line. Good We've field position. Good field position. Again, they split backfield. The whole ski up under. The pitch is to the left half as he comes to this side, and he's a good, tough runner as he keeps. He runs low to the ground and he keeps those legs moving, doesn't he? A little quickness. That's Michael Simmons, 190-pound uh, junior. He's he's the little man in their backfield, and yes, uh, he is. Uh, he's uh, about the size of Dennis Bean. Yeah, he's the smallest, as you said. So we've got 4:18 left in the first quarter. The Bulldogs trailing seven to nothing as the Pioneers. We've got a. An official timeout again. I'm not sure what that was. They go back and start it over. It'll be a second and about a yard and a half. The ball resting on the Bulldogs 48. We'll give you the defensive line up here in a minute for the Bulldogs. It's a cross buck as. Some face masking. Yeah, official saw yeah. that. Just a little bit on the out. For the Bulldogs, the defensive lineup is at the end will be Chipper Thornton, number 55. He's 175-pound uh, junior. The tackle will be Tom Pruitt. He's a seven, where's number 71, and he's 225-pound senior. They call that a flagrant, don't they? Uh, made it a 15-yard penalty. I think I disagree with that a little yeah. bit. It was it was a face mask, which was obviously obvious, but I don't know uh, about the fragrant part of it. I think the one thing that they look at is whether or not it turns the neck. Uh, if it does that, if it's a twisting type of pull, that they, they use that as a flagrant. Right. Uh, again, the cross buck as it goes the other way, and they hit him pretty good on that side. 
Uh, 55, that's Chipper Thornton. And uh, could you tell who the other man was for the Bulldogs? No, I didn't see it. didn't catch his number. They're oh. running a lot of counter action in there. They're faking the back to one side and giving the other back the other direction. Uh, it's a, it's a an offense that the defense has to stay and really play their area and, and watch their keys. If they take the fake the opposite side, which is what Kirkwood is hoping, then that's going to leave a wide open hole. They split their ends in the split backfield. Again, it's a, as that they stop Hammer. him right there. Mark Hammer, the nose Hammer. guard, made that tackle. And uh, uh, Hammer was one of them. I couldn't get who the other one up. On the other, the nose guard is Mark Hammer. He's number 51. He's a 175-pound senior. Uh, the defense, uh, the other defensive tackle is Jay Greenwood. He's 70, 250-pound senior. The defensive, other defensive end is Ron Sells, 175-pound junior. As most of the line is going, and we're going to show it just short as he stopped just short and tackled by let's see that's Carmody Carmody made the tackle it'll be a first and goal from about the one a short one yard line Sterling Hicks made that reception of a well thrown Prohoski pass the other defensive end is Ron Sells 175 pound junior wearing number 92 the linebackers are number 23 and Number 27, number 23 is Matt Heckemeyer. The linebacker, and uh, number 27 is Ken Latham. The uh, monster man is Gary Ellis. He's number 24. The safety is Brian Self. Carmody and Grant are the cornerbacks. Brohoski tried a quarterback sneak. They stood him up, I think, right at the line of scrimmage. I don't believe he got in. And marking it second down. I was just checking here. I think Chipper Thornton is the only uh, in place of Dennis Bean is the only boy that's not going both ways out of the that, starting lineup. Uh, I don't believe Dana Carter or is in Dana there. Carter, that's correct. Of course, I think Dennis now is, is on the far side in the secondary covering. Yeah. And he takes the place of Gary Ellis, doesn't it? As Touch he goes him. right in, that's number 31, 32. Was that 20? Anthony Vaughn. Vaughn, okay. A little difficult to spot the number there. As George told you, the kicker is a left-footed kicker. Soccer style. Up, and it's good. That wind is just right for him in that, in that particular kick in that goal. Yes, it is. That uh, it's blowing at a good angle for him, where he can just get the ball up and let the wind. Of course, he doesn't need much drift there. It's a strong leg is what he had, but he drilled it through. With a minute 14 left, the Bulldogs are trailing 14 nothing. Well, it's got to be a new feeling for him, Jim, to be down 14 to nothing. Uh, they were down six to nothing last week early against Charleston and rebounded very good and came back for the the big win, but. Uh, They've got it yet to do tonight. This will really be a test for them. And that's it's good. Uh, a good test in the first part of the season. Uh, you notice that they're still kind of trying to uh, gel a, a starting lineup as there's quite a few changes from our previous lineup of last week. Uh, well, you had hoped there would be as much improvement between game two and three as there was between one and two, but uh, there was a vast improvement last week over the game against Blyville. Uh, of course, our opponent tonight has got a lot to do with that. That's correct. I Good kick into the end zone. Into the end zone, and, and they'll let it. It'll be a touchback. Anthony Vaughn, who scored the touchdown, just kicked it out of the end zone with the win. So the Bulldogs will take over on the 20-yard line, their own 20-yard line. The field position's been a factor. Uh, the Pioneers have had field position twice and they've resulted in uh, touchdowns both of them the Bulldogs every time they've taken possession they've been back deep in their own territory that you know and, and Pioneers have started no deeper than the, their own 32 so that does make a difference uh oh the flag goes up in the backfield of our backfield so that would indicate 
what uh, illegal motion. procedure yeah looks like uh, it'll be against the Bulldogs and being deep in our hole of course the five yard penalty does not help at all yeah that that really hurts there as it'll be first and 15 from the 15 of the Bulldogs. Bulldogs still in the eye. They use the unbalanced line. Self gives to Bean as he pops outside. He got by one or two and he got the ball back almost to the 20 yard line. So he'll pick up four and a half yards. That'll make it a second and ten. What a difference that would made if there was no penalty, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd be looking at a second and five instead of a second and ten. At the roughly 25, wouldn't you? Right. We're down to about a half a minute left in the first quarter as the Bulldogs trail 14 to nothing. I think the Bulldogs need to practice a little ball control here, and uh, you don't need to panic. You are down two touchdowns, but... Little ball control, move the ball down the field and hopefully edge it into the end zone. Trying to go wide. Is there a flag? Uh, either that's going to be an illegal block or could be on the defense there as it came from the outside. Uh, the Pioneers are clapping could their a, hands. Could be a clip a lot of times along that kind of a. Brian Self, the quarterback, is all the way back on the goal line. Okay, they're talking to uh, the Pioneers, so it's a, it will definitely be against the Bulldogs. Some state rankings came out today that I heard. Uh, Kirkwood is ranked sixth in the state, and the Bulldogs are ranked eighth. So, again, a little added incentive there maybe for Kirkwood, knowing that, uh, that the Bulldogs are right behind them came down to apply some pressure and we'll continue to do that throughout. And that makes a lot of difference when we get down to the time when those who want to play in the playoffs in the end of the season, doesn't it? Yes, uh, I believe Kirkwood is in our district or yes. maybe in a district that uh, that we have to contend with, so need to make a good showing. That's It's a very complicated system that they have uh, in in the points that they allot for various things. Uh, one and loss, uh, the strength of the schools, uh, strengths of your opponents. Looks like a little cross oh. block and a fumble. Uh oh, picked right up, and he's going to go all the way in. I heard a whistle. Thought I heard a whistle. And that's the end of the quarter as they make the touchdown in the quarter. Uh, Uh, is that self? Uh, I think that was Carmody, the ball carrier. They brought him back from his wing back position on a little yes. counteraction type of a play, and he was really hit. Uh, maybe got a helmet right on the football, but anyway, he lost the ball, was picked up and run in by Kirkwood. And there's that left footed kicker out there again, Jim. <laughs> I'm getting tired. And of gets to kick right with a win. That last second uh, makes a difference there. So that'll make it 21 to nothing as we end the first quarter for the Kirkwood Pioneers. Can we go back in any way and replay this first quarter and, <laughs> and try to do a few things differently? Well, the Bulldogs will really have to pull themselves together now and uh, see if they can't uh, get the, I think the one thing that they'd like to do before they go in would be at least to get some points on the board here. Yeah, uh, the turnovers again, we, we mentioned a minute ago, uh, two turnovers have resulted in, in touchdowns. Uh, two fumbles that Kirkwood has, one they picked up and ran it in, the other they took numerous plays, but finally ended in the end zone with it. And a good football team uh, will take advantage of turnovers, and that's just what's happened here. Yeah, I think, and that's a key. Uh, and I think what you're saying there, a good football team does take advantage of those turnovers. Well, we've got the win this quarter. 
Okay, Bean is going deep this time for the Bulldogs. The up men will be, uh, is that 21 on the far side? I, I think that's Ellis, 24, and Greg Grant this side, this 14. This side, 14, okay. A lot different kick there. Squibb as Kenny Latham picks it up, and he twists and turns and gets up to the 35-yard line, a very short kick. Uh, I don't know if he just didn't get his foot into it or whether the wind had that effect. It didn't look to me like he got that high. I don't think he, he met it that solidly. Good field position anyway for the Bulldogs starting out here. Maybe a good, uh, good time to get some points on the board if we can capitalize this time. The Bulldogs are on the near hash mark as they go out of the eye, split both sides self the quarterback he gives to bean as he just lucks his head and goes right up through the middle and he'll pick up uh, three or four yards ron just showing some stats here total yardage in the first quarter kirkwood with 108 the bulldogs with 35 which is a direct result of the 21 to nothing kirkwood score bulldogs penalized 35 yards and kirkwood penalized for 10. Okay, the man goes into the slot on the far side. The split is to the far side as the Bulldogs stay in the eye. The give is to Bean, and he pops through and twists, turns, does a good job as he picks up another yard or two on his own initiative. Yeah, good second effort on Dennis's part there. They cross the 40-yard line down to about the 43-yard line. That'll make it third and uh, about two yards to go. As we've just entered the second quarter, Bulldogs are trailing 21 to nothing. So they've created a steep hill to climb as they're trying to cut it down. The give is to Bean. He hits and he's right up through the middle and they just had they everybody in there. Yeah, definitely keying on Dennis that time, yeah, that's Jim. For sure. A whole slew as Ellis, uh, Carter, uh, Brian Price, and uh, couldn't tell who the other one was came in. It's a punting situation. Carmody deep to punt. Good center. It's up. And it uh, goes out of bounds about on the 33 yard line as it faded out and he got it a little close to this side and so it just followed the wind right on out of bounds on the 33 yard line. And again they'll open up with uh, good field position. Yeah time and time again they've they've been set up uh, in good position on the field and they've taken advantage of it each time. They haven't run a real imaginative offense yet. They, no. They've got a couple of kids in that backfield that run hard and do have some speed. Been a pass or two thrown, but uh, basically they've uh, they've stayed with the basics. As he tries a straight handoff going up the right side uh, over the guard tackle slot, and uh, I don't believe he gained anything. Maybe a yard. Uh, let's we'll call it uh, second and nine. I believe Mark Caldwell in on the tackle along with. I believe it was Hamra. Let's see what we're going to do here. Brief time out by the officials. Looks like a, again a, he's changing the call at the line of scrimmage. Then he pops outside and the big boy gets by. They just can't stop him one on one as as Gary Ellis tried to touch tackle him there and he just that's kind of like trying to tackle Greenwood at uh, four four speed isn't it. Yeah that was Anthony Vaughn again 205 pound senior came around the end had a little opening Greg Grant came up and made some contact with him but Vaughn was able to shed Greg. It appeared to me that his hole was actually to be inside the end uh, between the tackle and the end and he saw that it was closed and just slipped outside. Yeah a good, again a sign of a good runner he was supposed to go off tackle that was closed and he took it to the outside for some yardage. 
We're going to get a measurement to see whether or not they made the first and ten. The ball is laying along this sideline on this side. Yeah, I think Jerry so Dyer short. and crew had to, to run all the way across the field on that. Oh, Jerry's run those chains for many, many years. A long time, hasn't he? <laughs> It's going to be short, a uh, matter of inches. Okay, it'll be third and inches, as George said, with just a little over nine minutes left in the first half. The Bulldogs trail by 21. Big play for the Bulldog defense. If you can shut them down without picking up the first and 10 here and forcing the punt, that'll be a little bit of an accomplishment. It, it certainly would. Not only that, they'd have uh, that wind in their faces this time and that uh, that could give us uh, some good field position. Looks like the Bulldogs are going to try to nice tackle by number 14. Greg Grant. Greg Grant. He just stood him up and just took him inside out with an assist by uh, 79. That's Caldwell. Uh, Mark Caldwell. Again that was Grant and Anthony Vaughn making some contact that time Grant won that one. He just stood him feet up and flipped him. It's a first and 10 as they're at about the uh, 41 or two. The handoff to Vaughn as he just keeps going, keeps running, and he's caught from behind by That's Grant again making Grant. that tackle. Good tough run there on Anthony it, Vaughn's it part. Sure he broke was. three or four tackles, uh, took it to the outside, had a blocker, but Grant was able to, to come up and make the tackle from behind. Big gainer. A lot of the old uh, T formation plays, isn't it? Yeah, just straight handoff, quick hitters right up the middle. In their backfield, Vaughn and Simmons only line up uh, three or four yards deep. I think that's another key. They hit that hole in a hurry. And they edge a little bit closer than that at times. One's closer than the other back. Sure is. You know, that may be a sign who's getting it. Uh, I've noticed a couple of times the the ball carrier tries to get that uh, three yard uh, stance. The other one, as you say, looks like he cheats up a little bit. Uh, well, I have to keep an eye on that. Maybe we picked up something. Quarterback kept it himself. Uh, Pick up of a couple of three as they go across the 25 down. Uh, well, they put it right on the 25. Say his knee touched there. Did, he picked up maybe a half a yard. It'll be third and five from the 25. Again, rather a strange call in that, uh, that particular situation, down situation. Uh, quarterback kept there uh, looked like a strange option. I don't know whether or not that was her quarterback type of a draw. One of the Bulldog uh, defensive tackles, I believe it was Greenwood, maybe came off the line real aggressive that time and jammed that play up. So that'll make it fourth and about uh, three and a half. Uh, looks like the board says two, but that looks closer to four yards to me than it does. Yeah, that's that's an awfully long two. Yeah. Big play for the Bulldogs. They move the uh, ends as they work on a second effort. I believe he may have gotten the first and ten. It's going to be close because it depends on where they put his knee down as to where whether or not he gets that first and ten. Uh, they're going to measure it. No, first and ten. First and ten. All right. Yeah, they put it right up next to the. I believe they gave him his full yeah. progress for sure. Again, a good ball carry, and he just stretched himself out as he was going down. Vaughn comes out of the game for Kirkwood. As we're coming up on six minutes left in the half, the Bulldogs are trying to make a valid stance here to keep this thing from going almost out of reach. Uh-oh, we've got a flag, and somebody apparently, that could be a maybe fail to put their mouthpiece in.
Well, both teams are backing up. Offsides, Bulldogs. Somebody must have uh, lined up offsides. You've got imaginary plane right above the football on either side of the end of the football. And if you happen to line up and your helmet or hand breaks that imaginary plane, then the official will stop it right there and penalize you. Something we didn't need at this point. Yeah, in, in effect, that gives you, uh, instead of first and ten, you're talking first and five. That was Simmons, and he picks up uh, almost the five. It'll be a second and very short yardage as the ball's just short of the 10 yard line. What do we get? The uh, looks like the uh, quarterback may be changing signals here. The option out gives to uh, is that Simmons again. That's Simmons. He makes his first and ten easily, and he's going to be uh, is he across the five. Let's see where he. Uh, as you see, we've just a little over five minutes, down by 21. I think they marked the that at half. about the seven. Okay, it'll be a first and goal to go from the seven-yard line of the Bulldogs. And again, we've got another. We've got a timeout on the Bulldogs. Okay, we're gonna, Coach Fiddler I think wants to give them the strategy for that goal line stance and most definitely would like to stop this one. Yeah, got to keep them out on this drive before we would go down 28 to nothing then. As we've said in previous games, uh, the, with the rule change, the coaches are allowed to come on the field and uh, talk to the players during the timeout. That is a team timeout, not an official timeout. That's, that's right. Try and imagine what Coach Fiddler might be saying is to, to tell his players to get low and try to fire off the ball and get under some of the offensive blocks. Uh, play your positions, not let the offensive people get to the outside. Of course, a lot of instructions you can give down there at, at this point, but carrying them out is something else. You would want particularly the from tackle to tackle to really give that hard charge uh, hoping you might clog up even the handoff. Yeah, Kirkwood has run very well from tackle to tackle with with Vaughn and Simmons on the quick openers and uh, they are opening so quick it's just a matter of, of not letting that offensive man blow you off your defensive position which is what's taken place so far. So with uh, just under five minutes left. The Bulldogs trailing by 21. We've got a timeout by the Bulldogs. Kirkwood has the ball. It is a first and goal to go from the Bulldogs seven. We've got a stiff breeze blowing from the northeast to the southwest. As the Pioneers are ready to start, the give is to that was to Vaughn, wasn't it? Yes. And he just pulled his way down to it looks like about the two or three yard line. Now he was met in the hole by a couple of bulldogs, but he had up enough steam, was able to drive forward and, and end up at about the two or three. And that's just that was just pure power there. Yes. The bulldogs did a good job defensively, but uh, the offensive blocking and Vaughn's running just overcame it. It'll be a second and goal from the three yard line. Poholsky. Barks the signals. The give is to Vaughn again. And they, it is a touchdown as he goes over from the three. Runs it up to 27. 27 nothing with 417 left in the first half. As Kirkwood is putting an awesome display of offense on for us. Yeah, just like we saw last week, the Bulldogs were able to do pretty much where they wanted to against the Blue Jays, and the tables have turned this week. The left-footed kicker ready, down, and up, and it's good. So 28-0, 4.17 left in the half, and the Bulldogs will receive. 
Well, Jim, I think at this point with 417 left with the wind at the Bulldogs back uh, is the time maybe to put the ball up in the air. Their, their running game is bogged down a little bit. They haven't tried many passes, but while they do have the wind, maybe uh, to get on the board before this half ends. And I, it may be that they're going to have to do that in order to uh, loosen up that defense a little bit because, as you say, they're beginning to key on Bean again. Yeah, I think they're going to have to throw it to, uh, to be effective. So with 417 left in the half, the Bulldogs are ready. Bean is, no, that's, uh, is. Yeah, I believe that's Carmody's back. Carmody's back at the uh, deep position. The ball is short. And it's. Was that 32, 32. Brian Price? Yes. Took that kick off and returned it. Brian Price is a 180 pound sophomore. And he plays in the line even, doesn't he? Yes. Very short uh, kick. Uh, he advanced it to the, it's almost to the 30 yard line. I see what approach the Bulldogs take with four minutes remaining. The man's in the slot as Self goes back to pass. Comes on deep. Uh-oh, we've got a trip and it's gonna be right there, right there. Offensive pass interference. I mean, a defensive pass interference. Uh, Carmody was trying to make a cut to the outside, and he one of the Pioneer tripped. defenders uh, did bump him. Bump that him may the be the break that we need if we can capitalize now. That'll put the ball up at about the 44-yard line of the Bulldogs. No, I think they marked no, they that go the line, back to the line of, scrimmage, line of scrimmage, scrimmage in high school, don't they? That's correct. We're used to those Sunday football games <laughs> where that ball goes right to the point of infraction, but uh, the 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. It'll make it on the uh, 44 yard line. One of the better gainers up tonight. 45 46 yard line. As we suspicion, Self did go back and is trying to open up the offense a little bit by throwing the ball, and pretty good results on that play uh, with the penalty. I don't think Carmody had a shot at that pass. I don't that either. Was a good thing that, uh, uh, that uh, now they moved the ball back a little bit. They didn't stop and pick these officials up on the <laughs> way down here, did they? Uh, it is at the 44 now. We got about a 17 to start with, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That's what they call a country 15 mm -hmm. yards, isn't it? Back to pass, a quick opener outside, and it's overshot as he was. Intended that for Carmody. Carmody again. They're only and sending two receivers down. Carmody went down to the right side in an out pattern, and Derek Tennant was in on the left side. He went down on a straight fly pattern. So they're keeping most all other receivers in to help block. And he was getting some pressure from the right side uh, of the defensive line anyway. If, uh, that would bend to the quarterback's left. Of course, as we suspected, Kirkwood knows that Sykeson's having to throw, and they're putting a lot of pressure on self. Like, that's uh -oh, an exchange as they really came in to, they didn't even get a chance to exchange it. It's a fumble there, and they really flooded that. Yeah, they're trying uh, to set up a draw, and I think Kirkwood bought all their linebackers and their secondary, and they had more people in the backfield than the Bulldogs did. As a result, the Bulldogs do fumble, and Kirkwood has it again with 338 remaining. Can they get on the board again, you think? Well, I uh, hope not. <laughs> well, this is where the Bulldogs are going to have to really buckle up. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a test of the willpower now. Hitch it up a little bit, dogs. And again, uh, that was in the cross buck. As you saw, the, the half back on this side got the ball. He was about a yard deeper than the... Uh, than the boy receiving it. It appears where the quarterback, uh, where the halfbacks are not handling the ball, they'll be almost even. Uh, I don't know whether that's just a coincidence or maybe that's uh, that just maybe may a be bad habit. That, that they line up right, it just may be a bad habit. Uh, Mark Cardwell at the bottom of that tackle.
Quarterback fake, long, deep. It's going to be overshot as the attended receiver was number 86. Uh, Sterling Hicks, 185-pound wide receiver. That's been uh, his target both times, hasn't it? Yeah, Prohoski, what, he put the ball up in the air uh, some 40, 45 yards against the wind. Against the wind. Yeah, well-thrown football. Well, I've been impressed with him. Uh, uh, I really have. Uh, he's handled this offense real well, uh, and I think there are numerous plays when he goes to the line of scrimmage and is, ch is changing the play after he looks over the defense as he studies it right now. And now I think he's changing the play. He fades back to pass. Shoot to, and overthrows it, Hicks again, and it, who is really belted by Gary Ellis. That's a good shot. Yeah. Uh, you make that in, uh, remember, and hopefully he'll he may take his eye off that ball and watch you the next time. I was impressed uh, again with Poholsky. He gets rid of that ball in a hurry, uh, set up quickly, and got rid of the ball in a hurry. Uh, number seventy. Uh, which is Jay Greenwood was giving him some pressure from the far side. Yeah, he does set up quick, awfully quick feet to get back and, and set up and to look downfield and pick up a receiver. Looks like they're going to punt. The first uh, punt of the night for Kirkwood. Uh, short punt, punt, and it's uh, low, and uh, they'll let it roll, and it'll roll down to about the 16-yard line. Again, that's about as good as you could expect uh, against the win, uh, 224. You're up by 28, and it's not good field position for the Bulldogs. Yeah, for the first time, the Bulldog defense did hold and for forced Kirkwood to punt. Now, back deep in that territory, I don't know if, if you go back and try to pass or you just try to run it out and not fumble and run this half out. Yeah, this is a question of uh, do you use some imaginary plays or do you... Look like a little uh, delayed draw of, of sorts. Uh, but yeah. they read the play very well. Uh, he he gained a little, but uh, not much at all. It'll be second and a long nine. Pretty for, safe play in that position of the field. Uh, quarterback goes back, and he did give it to Bean on type of a draw play, but Dennis has really belted at the line of scrimmage. And he goes off the field. Again, it looks appears that he's having equipment problems. The right side of that uh, Pioneer line has really been getting into the backfield of the Bulldogs. They really, they're quick and uh, they're big. As we roll to this side, it's to Ellis and he gets it on the flare pass. From uh, Self to Ellis, or Greg Grant, excuse me, Greg Grant, as uh, he rolled out in the flat. Pass was completed and a pretty good pickup. Uh, you did notice, old Jim, that uh, as soon as Grant caught the ball, he had three pioneers right, right around right. to sure make did. the tackle. And they're uh, giving a little bit, but they're not going to give the big one. Third in about uh, three yards for the Bulldog. This could be the key down for the Bulldogs. They need this three yards. Under pressure. Uh, no way as he just hung that ball up in the angle. He was intercepted. Uh, that's a tough pass to make in the first place. And you got that uh, wind blowing away from you as you try to circle that thing. And a, a good, smart defensive play. That boy just ran to the ball side of the intended carrier and just didn't let him have a chance at it. Yeah, that was probably a pass maybe that shouldn't have been thrown. Uh, as you said, it's a tough one to complete. You're running back and throwing back across your body against that wind and a heads up play by a Pioneer defender. So it'll be the defender's ball. They've got uh, the Pioneer's ball with a little under 30 seconds left they in the half. They want more. They sure do as they give that flat pass out to uh, That's Simmons. Simmons and he's, he's hit by Grant and Ken Latham. I mean, Gary Ellis and Ken Latham. Oh, they, they call timeout. <laughs> yeah, they're wanting to add, aren't they? Bad. <laughs> now, again, you know, we say this, and a lot of times we give coaches uh, a little bad word because of this, but 
one of the problems with this is the score counts in making up the points for playoffs. Yeah, that's and right. And so many coaches, not that they want to run the score up, but they do it simply so that they can get on the playoffs. It, it could make a difference in a tie situation. And in past years, we've had some situations where that has made a difference. It, yeah, that is one of the key factors, as you mentioned earlier. That's it's a very complicated point system, but uh, score is one thing that uh, you beat somebody by X number of points, then you that's just another point or two on your side of the ledger. So it, although it appears to us or to me at this point, they're trying to run <laughs> the score up. There may be a better reason than what I can think of right now for doing it. As she stands right now, the points would doubly add uh, by by beating Saxton, who would be ranked right near you, and two, by doing it by a, a large margin. Yeah, most certainly, that, that is true. So with a timeout on the field, 13 seconds left in the half, the Bulldogs are trailing 28 to nothing. Coach Fiddler trying to get the spirits up on the boys, uh, get them to dig in and uh, hold here, and we'll go into the halftime with uh, 28 down and come back uh, roaring and maybe we can get 28 by the second uh, half hours huh okay. fourth quarter and uh, go into the fourth quarter with a tie ball game and then overtime going up high and again a primary uh, there is uh, we're going to have pass interference, interference but that was because the defender never kept his eye on the ball did right he? he had his back turned he didn't know where the pass was at all as a matter of fact uh, had he, had he not even uh, bumped the defender, he could have still been called for blocking or shielding. Uh, shielding. Uh, okay, we've got a double penalty run, which indicating we may have an offsetting penalty. Ho oh, both of them are on us. Okay. Just trying to get a little hope here. <laughs> then these officials did come down here on the bus with Kirkwood, huh? <laughs> Okay, good. There we go. Okay, offsetting penalties. Holding Kirkwood, pass interference on the Bulldogs offset. That could be a good break. And there's that left-footed place kicker out going to an attempt to field goal. Going to try the field goal to put uh, points on the board again uh, with seven seconds left. It'll be a 39-yarder uh, against the wind. 39-yarder against the wind. Or into the wind. Yeah, the way that uh, the way he kicks, it'll be almost directly into the wind as it makes its hook, don't want it. Let's see. Are we going to change? Uh, we're going to change our strategy here. Poholsky's coming back in the ball game. Coach coming on the field. Uh, they picked up the tee, so maybe we're going to have a. Maybe three wasn't enough. He's going to try to put it in the end zone one more time. Yeah, that could be one of two things. Uh, He's going to play it well. If I don't get it, I'm not going to run the score up. Uh, if I'm lucky, I'll just I'll have another seven. Right. Because the uh, the field goal would really be a look to me like a, an attempt to really run the score up. Yeah, I simply think so Because you wouldn't get uh, that much out of it. So with seven seconds, the uh, Pioneers will have a second and about uh, eight yards to go. Score being 28 to nothing as Fiddler backs off the field, gives a last minute shout of encouragement, and we're underway again as Poholsky goes back, passes to the man in the flat. There's a flag down, complete pass, as he's still in, and he'll go into the end zone. He just absolutely got away from everybody. And let's see, wait a minute, we've got a flag, so let's see what we've got. A holding, holding, holding against the Kirkwood. No touchdown. That will nullify that. But that will also give them one more play, no, will it not? That, that, will that was an the, offensive play. That will end the half. It's an offensive play. Uh, penalty on the offense. In, uh, if it had been a defensive, defensive. defensive penalty, then they would have had this, the play again. That should be the half. Yeah, that that is the half. Some discussion about that. Uh, I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I think the coaching staff's got uh, a little job at hand now is to go in and, and talk to your players and, and try to keep them fired up. And uh, as I'm sure Coach Vickery and his staff will attempt to do and try to make some corrections. Uh, I, I really don't know what uh, what you could tell your your players at this point other than to, to keep your head up and come back and and just play a tough second half. And that's what's real tough is to really encourage them to come back that second half. With uh, halftime, 28 to nothing, Kirkwood Pioneers, we'll be back with you in about uh, 10 minutes. And welcome once again to halftime 1984. The Saxon High School Department of Music is proud to present the 1984 Bulldog Marching Band. The band is directed by Mr. Pat Curry and is led while on the field by junior drum major Miss Christy Latham and by senior drum major for 1984 Miss Courtney Corbett. Country Group Alabama provides the music as the exciting 1984 twirling line led by head twirler Cheryl Hodges presents this version of that good old down home mountain music. of Barry Manilow is enjoyed by millions of fans, both young and some not so young. Watch now as the band interprets the lovely ballad, Even Now.
As the band prepares to conclude this evening's performance with a traditional red and black, the Department of Music wishes to thank you for your support, your kind attention, and your most warm applause. Welcome back to the second half of the Saxon Bulldog Kirkwood Pioneer game as the Bulldogs are trailing Kirkwood 28 to nothing. Uh, as we wait on the Bulldogs and the Pioneers to come on the field, Ron, you want to give us the statistics for the first half? Well, they're, about, they're just about as bad as the score would indicate. Looks like the uh, Kirkwood has a total of 171 yards, 134 running and 37 passing to the Bulldogs 45. 39 running, six passing. It's all been Kirkwood. Uh, I think not only have they just run the ball right down our throat, the, we've turned the ball over four times, three fumbles and one pass interception right there at the end. Uh, along with 40 yards worth of penalties, I, I guess there's just not anything, Jim, we can say. It's very good on, you know, offensively for the Bulldogs. We've just, we just haven't done well. As the, uh, the, statistics indicate it looks like uh, Bean is 11 carries 35 yards so there's one of the big differences from last ball game uh, at this stage he was at what about a hundred and yeah, a little over 100 yards at halftime uh, or right at a hundred at halftime last week I think the uh, of course here at the last two or three times the dogs have had the ball they've had to throw so uh, he really hasn't had a chance here in the second quarter he's only carried the ball four times in the second quarter so uh, once you get down running of course is not the way to come back That's so uh, I suspect that we're not going to see nearly as much of Dennis in the second half as we would normally expect to see of him I think that uh, they've now dictated that we throw the ball and and uh, you know it, it, we'll just have to see how that comes out I I think we're going to lose our bread and butter is, is, is what we're going to have to do something that we different than we would like to do in the second half uh, as come back Kirkwood now comes on to the field uh, you know, uh, again, I, I would think that it is obviously a steep hill to pull, but it's not an insurmountable hill. 
Well, and I don't think that, that, that the dogs should get themselves down. I, I mean, uh, we are playing probably one of the finest high school football teams that, that, that I've seen in a long, long time. This is not a, uh, we are not getting whipped by, by a bunch of flukes. I mean, <laughs> these True. boys are big and they are strong and, and, and that's the problem. As uh, George indicated in the first half, uh, Kirkwood is, has the rating for the first week of number six in the state in the 5A school. So uh, that's not too shabby as, as Saxton was ranked eight, but. Uh, well, and this of course has got to help them. I mean, they'd only played one game in rank six. We played two games and, 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 and had two good nights in, in, in ranked eight. This, this for sure is gonna increase their rank. Uh, uh, like I say, I, this may be the finest football team that I've seen in several years. Uh, they are, like I say, big and strong. And uh, uh, as the coaches were talking here at, at halftime, uh, they, they're they reading well. They, they It's a well-schooled football team. They they not only are big and strong, but they know what they are. Once they, the first time that Dennis had the ball, he ran very well. Saxon was able to get him, get him down the field for 28 yards in his first possession. The next time we had the ball, Dennis ran for two. The next time we had the ball, he ran for five. I mean, so they have they have quickly found out what we do and, and have been able to shut it down. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting point. In the first quarter, Dennis uh, ran seven, ten, three, and eight yards at a carry. Uh, from there on, he shut down uh, pretty well. So that makes a big difference. And, the, and of course, the penalties and the, and, and the, and the turnovers uh, have got, but uh, of course, Let's face it. I mean, that those boys on the other side of that line are causing some of those fumbles. That's right. Uh, uh, the the interception, I think, was a just a bad uh, a bad throw. I think he, the quarterback uh, just made a mistake. <laughs> he threw the ball up and and and, the, and I don't, you know just wasn't there. But uh, some of that is uh, you know. Uh, experience makes a difference there, and you can tell that experience in uh, Kirkwood's quarterback. Oh, and he threw that ball 50 yards while it go right on a string, you know, out there. He uh, he stood back there on the, at the 50-yard line and threw it in the corner of the end zone. He is a dandy, and, and uh, of course, he's thrown uh, twice. I mean, we you know, their, their passing offense doesn't look uh, all that impressive, but the two times that he has completed, well, he's completed three, but two of those passes uh, were in desperate situations. He was, uh, he was uh, third and long twice and completed the ball. Uh, to get him out of the hole. So uh, uh, when he has to pass and when he needs to pass, he can do it. Uh, uh, so uh, you know, I, at this point, he deserves probably all of the all of the print he's been getting. Well, they're fixing to tee it up here, Jim. I'll let you and George get back at it, and I'll have some see what we can do here if I can't get the statistics to look a little better by the end add, of the ball game. Add those statistics up then. George said we could get 28 the third quarter and uh, finish him off the fourth. Uh, the Bulldogs will uh, punt or kick off the second half. Uh, they will be defending the north goal going from left to right on your screen as the Kirkwood Pioneers will defend the south goal and receive. You mean, Jim, we've got to give the football up to them to start the second half that, here, too. That's a huh? tough way to start, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'd like to take a minute to congratulate Coach Vickery and his wife, Kathy, on the birth of a son this past Tuesday. Uh, I think they've got a couple of daughters, and now they've got the first son got, in the Vickery family. Got his family. football player, hasn't got he? Got his football player, and I'm sure he'll be well-trained and coached. So I, congratulations to Charlie and Kathy. I see Grandpa and Grandma are all smiles down here in front of us. Well, I, I guess, Jim, I think uh, we, since we do have to kick off, we, we've got to hold them in their first offensive set and get the ball back and start to move it some. Start pecking back a little. Uh, as they get the ball, bring it up to, as they cross the 25, they'll start from about the 20, no, they'll go on across the 30 before they're uh, downed. And it's gonna be about the 32 yard line. So they haven't started deeper than, well, it's on the 33 even. Yeah, uh, they've they have good started, field position. Yeah, they really have. They've, uh, 32 has been the deepest so far tonight that they've started. We've just started the third quarter Bulldogs are down by 28 and have to defend as we start the uh, third quarter. The pitch is to Vaughn and they come through in a hurry as uh, that was Sells coming through, sliced through and did a fine job 
Yeah, fine defensive play, and that's what the dogs got to do. That was Simmons trying to, to sweep the right in, and uh, fine tackle in there by the Bulldogs. I think we've got one of them down. So he lost a yard on that, oh, and they got the quarterback got Brian Bulldog. Self that's down. That's one of the risks you run when you got to play them both ways, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's uh, particularly he being the quarterback uh, and playing in the secondary on defense, which at the strong safety or at one of the safety position that he plays, that uh, is not one of the the more positions that is prone to being injured unless like he did on that time he did come up and was in on the tackle and of course it was a pile up and I don't know it looks like they're looking at a knee which is is not good at all and uh, one of the things we've got to look at is our backup quarterback is also on defense yes that's Scott Carmody I or Greg Latham uh, yeah I think uh, I don't know who he might go to when Looks the Bulldogs like, do get the ball back. Greg like Latham did helped. come in. And Off quarterback last last week at the end of the Charleston game, so that doesn't look good at all for the Bulldogs. We still have a pretty strong wind blowing out of the northwest, or excuse me, out of the northeast. Dennis Bean in to replace self in the secondary. Okay, the uh, he'll be playing in the safety position. Uh, Volsky goes back to pass. He still gets that ball off. Did you, did you, he had two uh, Bulldogs on him. He stayed up, got his arm up, threw it, and uh, was right around. Was it completed? It was a yes. completed pass. And I believe it'll be right at a, uh, just short of a first and ten. Pruitt was in the backfield making contact with Pahoski, and I think Hammer was in there, but uh, he shook them and was able to, to roll a little bit and completed the pass. Impressive quarterback. Yes, he is. Uh, he's got size, he's got strength, and he looks like he's a smart quarterback. Yeah, definitely smart. The power eye. And that looks like the quarterback. Did he give it to the up man, or did the quarterback take it? I think he handed the ball off, but hard to no, tell. No, it was Poholsky who took it and he got the uh, first and ten. Twenty two into the game for the Pioneers. Derek Scott, a sophomore running back at 165 pounds. So even at that, they don't lose much with a sophomore in there at 165 weight wise. I was talking to Miss Stevener at uh, halftime and she's from the Kirkwood School uh, District. That's where she went to school. I didn't realize how big a district that is. She says that runs down into Fenton and in that area. All of South County then. Almost, almost all of South County. That's right. I said she went to uh, Kirkwood. I think she said she went to Lindbergh. Uh, high. Official timeout. We've got more equipment problems with the Bulldogs. Like we're trying to get the pads on. Busted a chest string. There's been some pretty good hitting on both sides of the line. Uh, the Bulldogs have, have made some gang, ta gang tackles here early at the start of the second half, which is one thing they have to do apparently. To more that takes more than one tackler to bring these ball carriers down. That's that's definitely true with the size and power that they have. And the give is to Vaughn, and they've cut him down again as uh, he just didn't have uh, that Simmons, excuse me. Ellison Pruitt up on the tackle. It. Uh, Another ball log on. No, that's the Pioneer getting up a little bit slowly. That's number, number 62. 62. That's the right Pullman. guard, Ken Pullman, 185 pound senior. And the Bulldogs have done a good job on that running game uh, in the opening plays of the uh, first, uh, excuse me, the second half. Yeah, with the gang tackling that uh, that they're showing right now, they're, the Pioneers are marching a little bit, but not with the success they had in the first half. I believe our, our, our uh, line, uh, particularly the far side, is uh, really getting off the ball a little better, too. And that would be Pruitt, uh, Hamra, Greenwood, Sells, front four. As Pullman goes back to 
He's hit almost immediately, but he gets the pass off and completes it to 80, no, 82. That's uh, Hughes. Aaron Hughes. I guess Bohoski standing back there in that pocket uh, with the pressure that he's getting and able to pick out receivers and complete those passes. It's uh, for a high school quarterback to have that ability. That that's really amazing. And he's got an advantage in that he looks like uh, he could be what six one or two. Yeah, he's tall. And uh, he's got some two hundred pounds. That's what he's listed yes. at. The give is to the quick opener and they hit him and draw him back. Uh, he may pick up two or three yards uh, if they give him the full progress. Matt Heckemeyer, the linebacker, came up and met the ball carrier in the hole and then was helped by three or four other Bulldogs. So with uh, a little over eight minutes left in the third quarter, the Pioneers are on the Bulldogs' 29-yard line. They've got a second and eight. And they're playing ball control. And they're playing the ball control. Is we can't score if we don't get the football. Split to both sides. Quarterback fades, and he's looks like he was going to get hit. Uh, he just threw it right between his hands, and uh, that was Anthony Vaughn, one of the halfbacks out of the outfield, out of the backfield. It went out into the flats and caught the little flare pass and picked up good yardage. Yeah, he just ran almost uh, parallel to the line and almost even with the line. Gets the pass and then cuts back across the middle, and he just has power. Picks up a good gainer, first and 10 uh, from about the 15 yard line of the Bulldogs. Another thing I note, some of the offensive linemen from Kirkwood after the pass was caught was in the secondary making some blocks for the ball carrier. So that's just good head up to offense. The give is to the quarterback keeps. He's gonna make it all the way, I believe. He's down and in. No, oh, excuse me, he's down to the five and across the five to about the three yard line. The fake was to the halfback going in the middle of the line. He came outside. And again, you know, it's not because uh, the defense is leaving position. They, they're just coming at him and they just got such power that they're just running over us. Uh, well, that offensive line for Kirkwood is really doing a job. They're firing off and, and driving the Bulldog defenders most times just backwards, and the ball carrier does have a hole to hit, and they're hitting it quick and getting yardage doing it. So with the Pioneers up by 28 in the early going of the third quarter, they've got a first and goal from the Bulldogs three. Coach Fiddler out in the defensive huddle again, trying to, to get the team together. Yeah, this has got to be tough. Uh, you know, you come out, uh, you'd most definitely like to have the ball as you open up the third quarter when you're that far behind. Uh, this really puts a tough burden on the Bulldogs. Uh, they're close to putting another score on the board again now and uh, just adding a little insult to the injury. I think if if we could once get a score on the board that could make a lot of difference uh, but we just haven't had the field position and uh, nor the ball. Yeah, as, as <laughs> Ron indicated in his uh, statistics there that the turnovers when we did have a little ground game going uh, the turnovers stopped those. So there's been a lot of factors uh, that have hurt the Bulldogs. We are standing at 645 left in the third quarter. Bulldogs really buckling up here as it's a first and goal to go for the Pioneers from the Bulldogs three. Split the ends to both sides. They pack the. Uh, that Simmons into the end zone for a Kirkwood touchdown. They just play that power football. They uh, both the backs. Uh, uh, a little different from the old T, but they just put them right together in the backfield. Uh, it's a lead play where the back that's not carrying the ball leads through the hole oh. to pick up the linebacker, and then the ball carrier comes through. And 
when you've got a lineman that's at about uh, 270 pounds and uh, uh, you got a back at 200 pounds leading the boy carrying the ball at 190, that's lots of power, isn't it? It's a lot maybe to stay away from when you see that coming at you. <laughs> so that's 35 on the board for Kirkwood with 638 left in the third quarter. Bulldogs will receive. Again, they're defending the north goal going from left to right on your screen. As you see, 638 left in the third quarter. Again, uh, even the, the heads and the shoulders droop a little bit at this stage, don't they? It's, uh, it's yeah. a long ball game. It's uh, the Bulldogs need to, to generate a little offense, and if, if they can possibly get one in the end zone before this is over uh, for a little momentum builder, uh, you really don't realistically look for them to come back with much of a chance to win this one, but uh, not looking ahead to next week that, that rapidly, but uh, you do have Poplar Bluff coming in here, and... Uh, you know, you want to get things together and regroup and, and get ready for that game, although this one's not over. And that's uh, Popper Bluff being the team picked to win this conference this year. Yes, they are. The three teams of Sykes and Cape and Bluff. Uh, Popper Bluff is favored to win that three-team conference. So uh, Bulldogs have a tough first-half schedule. That ball's kept low, and it rolls as Latham picks that thing up at about the 20-yard line, comes across the 25 as he is downed on about the 31 or 2 yard line. He did a good job of picking the ball up. Uh, that ball was kicked low just over the heads of the uh, lineman. That's kind of a dangerous thing because that thing pops somebody on the helmet uh, lineman and uh, that's a free ball. Yeah, I think that's maybe what they were trying to do <laughs> to get the ball back. As we do see, uh, Greg Latham is in at quarterback now, replacing the injured Brian Self. I don't see Brian on the sidelines anywhere. I was looking also. I, I didn't, couldn't tell whether he was up or not. As he, uh, he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. And uh, again, now this is a little tough because uh, this quarterback generally is not used to his halfbacks, and there's always uh, a little difference in that uh, exchange uh, that's a, a rhythm kind of thing isn't it yeah you've got as you mentioned the the added problems there of the new quarterback coming in uh, with the cadence and everything uh, maybe he's worked enough in practice to you know to be adept at this but he's under the pressure a give again is to uh, I think that was being being off the left side he may have got it back to the original line of scrimmage and that'll make it third and uh, let's call it ten as we're counting down to 5.20. Carmody in the lineup. Tough position for reserve quarterback to be in. Yes, it is. Indications that this would be a pass. Carmody to this side. Man in the slot as they work out of the eye. Latham uh, throws it in a hurry as he had somebody all over him. Uh, yeah, he barely got that ball off before he was buried by number 88, Keith Graff. And again, uh, we may have been a little lucky there. Uh, that's the kind that the experience will tell you, you eat that ball. Yeah, that was put up and it could have been intercepted. And had it been, this whole left sideline was wide open. And... So Carmody will drop deep with 455 left in the third quarter. Dogs are down by 35. Good snap. Punt is up, good high kick, and uh, as Vaughn gets inside, and he's making a good run as he just keeps coming, and oh. the ball's loose. As uh, as luck see. would have it, the ball is loose, and there's one, two, three, three. four pioneers all, all around, around it, not a bulldog. We've got a bulldog down on about the uh, 40 that's, yard line that's again. Carmody. Working on a possibly a knee or an ankle. Uh, one on each side. Uh, the trainer for the uh, Pioneers was helping the Bulldog until their own trainer got out, and then he goes down and helps his own. Uh, could be uh, both of them are Carmody's up, and he's hobbling off 
on his own power, but he's he's limping. Now he was shaken up yeah. uh, a little bit earlier in the first half. That could be an ankle. Uh, looks like that what what it might be on uh, Carmody. The uh, Kirkwood boy looks like they're working on his knee. Gary Ellis comes in uh, for the Bulldogs. As he's still down on the field. We've got 35 Mark Wiggins in in the defensive secondary along with Ellis Bean and Grant. We might uh, see uh, Wiggins uh, you know he did a good job the last week uh, again experience and and your opponents make a lot of difference uh, but uh, just to see if they can't get something going here. Yeah, uh, late in the game last week, he came in, came in and ripped off a couple of uh, touchdown runs and ended up, I think, with 100, over 106 yards or so on uh, half a dozen carries and uh, was real impressive. That's Simmons that they carry off, and they're carrying his leg, and that I know they don't like to see that. Uh, I hope he's not injured uh, too bad, but maybe we won't have to see him anymore tonight. <laughs> Let him be ready for next week. As the Bulldogs really gang tackle there. 22 Derek Scott the ball carrier. Picked up about three three and a half. Is, uh, Pruitt and uh, let's see who else was in on that tackle. That'll be second in about seven. With just under four minutes left in the third quarters and the Bulldogs trailing by 35. Uh, Heckemeyer and Brian Price, the linebackers inside. Pioneers have put in a couple of boys. It's quarterback keep. I don't know if that was a miss play and uh, quarterback just had to keep it because of the miss handoff. I think that was a set play set the way play. he reversed out of there and tucked the ball in. And after the back went by, he kept it and tried to go around the end. He made uh, maybe a yard or so, so it'll be uh, third and six. Just shy of the 41 of the Bulldogs. Running out of the eye now. The ends are split. The give is to the tailback and number 55. That's Chip Thornton coming across Chip making Thornton a good really defensive comes tackle. Through there. Sales helps as uh, Bulldogs did a good job there. That brings up a fourth down and a punting situation for Kirkwood. They lost maybe a yard or two on that as the ball is back at the 44. And they're in a punting situation as Good punt. Ball drops short as it's picked up immediately as it begins to bounce backwards. And the, again, the Bulldogs will start with deep field position as it's on about the 18-yard line. 2.13 left in the third quarter. I guess as well as anything, Jim Kirkwood has done an outstanding job of keeping Sykes and back deep in their territory just about every time they've started an offensive series. You know, and and one of the things that and Coach Vickery mentioned this uh, in one of the previous games that he was hoping that they would not have to play football where the score and the defense dictated the offense that they would play. Of course, being this far behind, you, you normally have to put the ball up to try to, to get back in it. But when you're so deep in your own territory, you, you've got to, to go away from that to, to go back to the running game to try to get a little room to, to throw it. And you've got two problems here. He's, he's in with his uh, uh, quarterback, uh, second line quarterback, which has not had the experience. So that uh, just puts an additional burden both on the quarterback and the coach. Yeah, Greg Latham and Brian Self are both juniors. Latham keeps he cuts up field as he slips and he picks up uh, three or four maybe five yards 
I think you can see how well they're keen on Dennis Bean. He didn't even have the ball, and he was tackled by, by two pioneers. I, and I believe it was really a busted play. I don't he, believe uh, Latham was supposed to get that. I think Dennis was supposed to take that on the, on the carry on that one, but he was he was hit so quickly that and knocked out of the play that uh, Latham wasn't able to hand yeah, it to him. And uh, Latham was trailing behind him again. That's uh, probably they've had haven't had the chance to exchange the ball like that. A little cross buck and I think Carmody's got the first. And I ten. believe he does too. So his injury was not serious. He's back in. And. Bulldogs are beginning to move that ball a little bit here with 35 seconds left in the third quarter. It'll be a first and 10 for the dogs. And I believe self comes back into the lineup. Uh, no, he doesn't. I thought that was number 10, but I don't believe it was. I believe that was Derek Tennant in yes. with the play. Latham still the quarterback. And the give is to uh, Bean as he picks up three or four yards. And you could tell there that uh, having gone to two other backs in running plays, uh, whether they wanted to or not, kind of gave him a little better opening there. Yeah, he did. He, he broke through there and picked up a little bit of yardage. So as the third quarter ends, the Bulldogs have the ball. They've a second and about uh, five and a half or six yards. Bulldogs down by 35 as we start the last 12 minutes of play. Of I still think your goal at this point is to get in the end zone before this football game is over. I think that's right. Uh, it's an emotional uh, stand now, isn't it? There's not a whole lot of difference between 35 to nothing and 35 to seven, but uh, there's a lot of a spirit in, in the fact of just scoring against this Kirkwood bunch uh, would be a big uplift for next week's Popper Bluff game. And it, uh, it, it could give a lot of talking room for the Bulldogs as they would say, you know, we're talking about 7-7 uh, seven, seven, uh, kind of situation in the second half. Uh, right. So they just play them even. Football's loose. Now there, as you and mentioned early, then as Kirkwood recovers that fumble, that was just a busted play. The exchange was not uh, very crisp. Ball fell to the ground and Kirkwood has it back. So it will be the Pioneers ball. They have it on the uh, Bulldogs uh, 31 yard line. The wind seems like it's picking up to me. Yes it is. It's blowing briskly now. Uh, Kirkwood coach is staying with his first unit offense in there the best I can tell. Prohoski still in there at quarterback. And it uh, I guess the only folks that may be warm is Pioneers huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good defensive play as he uh, he may have lost a little bit and uh, a lot of the two Bulldogs thirds fans. of the whole Bulldogs team was on that tackle. Picked up some maybe a our, yard. Some of our fans leaving here too, Jim. I, you don't think you don't reckon they feel that the, we can't make these 35 up in the last 11 minutes? Either that or they just want to get home and watch the end of it on uh, get ahead TV. of the traffic, huh? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be second and nine for the Pioneers from the Dogs 30 yard line. Ooh, the Lily Al, he started, he looked like he started too quickly there. The halfback was in motion. I think we do have a couple of new ball carriers in the backfield for Kirkwood, number 22, Derek Scott, who has been in for an offensive set or two, and number 35, Glenn Keller. 185 pound junior running back that was guilty of a little, little illegal procedure on that play. He wanted to get out there and get his block a little ahead, didn't he? That's just good aggressiveness. <laughs> he wasn't going to be the ball carrier, but he wanted to get out there and, and lead the play with the block. You can't fault that that much. Yeah, that that's not the thing, uh, kind of thing that coaches are really upset about, is it? No, that was just, that's aggressiveness, and that's something you don't like to happen, but uh, you know, you won't, you won't get after him too much about that. And again, uh, probably that's some inexperience uh, with game experience. Uh, they'll get that down. I do see number Simmons, number 21 Simmons down on the sideline standing up, so he doesn't appear to be injured too seriously. Yeah. Standing along the other starting halfback, Anthony Vaughn. 
as Poholsky goes back to pass and he hits number 84. It's complete and it's down to the Bulldogs about 12 yard line and that'll be a first and 10. I'll let you pronounce George's last name there, Jim. Uh, what's number Deuce? Deucheman? Well, that's That'd simple be enough. Nice catch anyway. And the, uh, in the German, there are a lot of syllables that are a lot of letters that are silent. Well, I think I just mark them out of my name then. <laughs> <laughs> Got about 17 letters in his name, last name. And say five of them, and that, that makes it easy, yeah. huh? <laughs> the pitch is to the halfback, and they've got him cornered deep. Mark uh, Caldwell comes across and makes a nice tackle. He'll lose uh, four or five yards as he was there almost at the exchange. Backs that ball up to the 20-yard line. And that'll make it a second and uh, 20. Board says 17 as we're down to about nine and a half minutes left in the ball game. Pride is what they're playing for now. They've got to stop them here, and Bulldogs need to put something on the board, as George has said. I notice they've left Poholsky in there the whole game so far. Uh, again, that looks like they're going to catch him early and down, and that he's going to have another loss as he's back to about the uh, 22 or 3 yard line. Wiggins and Ellis in on the tackle. And uh, Sells, number 92. I think that's three. a new, new number for Ron. Uh, last week, I think he wore number 60. and. And tonight he had a shot at uh, playing tight end and had to go to a, an end's number where he was eligible for pass receptions. You know, I, I noticed that, but I noticed on uh, Kirkwood's teams, uh, they have not used that numbering system. No, they, what we noticed earlier, they've they got had a 39 uh, on a tight end. Uh, yeah. You know, some of the, uh, maybe they're using him as a wing back uh, situation, split in. Yeah, I believe you're right. Poholsky up again and he hits him right under night. They're running right under the cornerback and over the uh, linebacker. That's a well-timed pass play. And you can tell they've spent a lot of time in practice, obviously, on that. That's a timed pattern. The receiver goes down and makes his cut at 10 or 12 yards and turns around and the Poholsky has put the ball right there. So that's something they've spent a lot of time working on. Interesting enough, uh, Poholsky does that in two different sets, too. He'll do it as he rolls. Uh, to his right or left, and he also does it on the straight drop back. Yeah, I've been very impressed with him. He's he's, an, he's a good looking quarterback. Their ball, it'll be a fourth and about uh, seven. As he drops back, throws it into the end zone. He's got a man open as he makes a nice catch. He Aaron just Hughes. lofted it back over there. Now again, a good touch. He's got a good arm, but he did not try to uh, knock his man down. He just lofted that ball over the uh, uh, cornerback there. No, as you said, he didn't force that play. He just set up, and that that receiver knew when that ball was coming. He goes down and makes his cut, and the ball's there. Bang, they've got another touchdown. How many now? That makes it uh, 41. Uh, Attempting at the 42nd six, point. Six touchdowns. <laughs> Up and good for 42. And it, it was a smart play to the extent that he had a tall end. Uh, he was running over uh, Greg Grant, who is, uh, what, five, looks like uh, maybe five, nine, five, ten. Uh, trying to cover somebody that was maybe six foot or six one, right? Yeah. That was that was a, a nice call play, whether Pahoski or the coach called it. And it was well-timed and well-thrown. It was just, you know, like everything else they've done, uh, they've done it good like you draw it on the board yeah <laughs> and hopefully go out on the field and perform it and Kirkwood has done that tonight yes you can tell uh, not only are well coached team but they uh, are a team that has executed very well so the Bulldogs down by 42 720 left in the fourth quarter uh, hope now to get something on the board here We've even got a new kicker, number three, Matt uh, Heights. Up uh, 
Uh -oh. Uh oh that thing sailed over his head. Uh, that's Wiggins got the ball and he's coming back this way and he's going to be caught deep. Uh, looked like he somebody tried to hold him keep him from running out. I think they thought he was in the end zone and uh, thought he shouldn't run out. They, the ball squirted loose. I think they had blown it dead. But again the Bulldogs are deep deep in their territory. Uh, what at the five and it had he uh, had he been in the end zone. I think it would have been dangerous too because they could have tackled him because he had touched the ball prior to it going into the end right, zone. Right, he, he couldn't have downed it. Uh, and there you're talking about uh, the safety and then having to kick the ball back to them. Wig is that Wiggins in the uh, tailback yes. position now? He's standing. Ball's loose. Oh, Carmody's at the quarterback, and he falls on the ball. So it'll be uh, second and. Lost a couple on that and about 12 then for the Bulldogs and the ball resting on about the uh, three yard line of the Bulldogs. We've got uh, Carter back into the offensive line. Put a little beef in there. Again Wiggins standing about uh, midway into the end zone. The pitch is to Wiggins. He's got to come outside. He tries a couple of moves and he does a good job there. He gets across the five up to about the six yard line. Yeah, Dennis Bean on that carry. Oh, Dennis, excuse me. He didn't made a nice run. Uh oh, we've got uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Late hit. Okay. Attack 15 yards onto that run by Dennis. Field announcer Buddy Clayton says it was a late hit and adds 15 on to it. Uh, that's a big help. Gets us out in the 22, 23 yard uh, territory. Of, gives us a little room to operate. Oh, Bud's still staying right on top of the game, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. Grant, Ellis, Bean, Latham, Carmody at quarterback. Again, we've changed quarterbacks again. So uh, again, you got to get a little timing. Uh oh, he was going to it was a roll and it was to hit the man in the flat just over his head. I believe that was Heckemeyer. Intended for Heckemeyer. A little behind him and a little high. Yeah, that's one way to, to avoid some of the pressure and the rush that they're putting on is just to roll out and throw on the run. Of course, that that uh, compounds your problem of trying to complete passes is to have him throw on the run. But if you can get outside and avoid the rush and set up uh, a lot of times you can complete passes. So we're looking at a second and 10 uh, from the 22. As Carmody's at quarterback out of the eye the pitch is to reverse. Oh, it's a reverse as Grant goes around the far side and he's got some room. He's going to pick up a cup almost to the first and 10 he's still going and he's going to make his first and 10 as that individual effort makes it he just picks it up on his own as he that was a nice play well executed uh, a little something different and they weren't ready for that was it yeah that was a nice run by greg uh, tom pruitt was out waiting to to give him a block on the outside tom blocked one man and greg turned the corner and picked up the first and ten and that was the key to get that that corner man has to be blocked in for him to make any yardage at all yes he does first and ten from the uh, 35 36 yard line of the bulldogs the give is to uh, bean bean and he comes across tackle on the left side and he'll pick up maybe a couple of yards wrapped up by big number 70 on the kirkwood defensive line Lamar Powell, 190 pound sophomore. And this is where the old dogs have really got to show what they're made of as they're down by 42. They've got most of the boys that have played both ways and it's got to be a a, a tough, sore, uh, hard night for them, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. They've, been, they've yeah. taken some licks. All That's right. Wiggins. Wow. That's Wiggins as he comes around the corner and he picks up a good uh, Maybe uh, 10 yards. Uh, it's going to be close to the first and 10, and they wave it on as a first and 10 as he crossed the uh, 45 up to about the 47 yard line. This has been a very physical football game, Jim. Uh, been a lot of good hitting on both sides, but as you mentioned, uh, most of the Bulldogs playing both ways that have been in there on offense and defense, uh, you know, they've got to be tired at this point. 
But whether, you know, they can buckle it up right now and continue this drive and get it in the end zone. Yeah, this is where the, the mental comes in, isn't it? Uh-oh, a little holding, but I believe we got by with that. Carmody's over. He picks up, uh, he'll pick up another six or seven yard line. Uh, did a good job after he got by at the end. Uh, he kept that ball up, uh, kept the uh, cornerbacks uh, so they couldn't cheat on him, and that gave him enough room to pick up five or six yards. Yeah, until he crossed that line of scrimmage, he could have thrown the ball, and that's what those the linebackers had to play back for. It was a nice gain. It'll be second and about three yards for the uh, Bulldogs. We've got a little over three and a half minutes left. Uh, fake the uh, reverse this time, and... Uh, Bean keeps it, and he may get close to the first and ten. The Bean or Wiggins, uh, I think. Uh, Bean. Was Dennis, yes. yes. How deep? I, what's the deepest penetration that we've been in their territory I, tonight? Are I believe this is it. I do, don't too. You? Uh, I really do. As we cross the 50 down to the, about the 42-yard uh, line of the Pioneers. Yeah, I believe this is the first time we've been in Pioneer territory. Ron says earlier... That's correct. In the first series of downs, we fumbled it right down around the 32-yard line. Uh, they they took over on their 32. That's correct. That was in the very first offensive series. That's right. So we're approaching anyway. The, it was the so deepest long ago we couldn't even remember that. I know what. <laughs> With 3:20 left, the Bulldogs down by 42. Uh, we've got a first and 10 with a big wind blowing. We've but again, we, we've, we've got to start maybe setting our, our sights on Papa Bluff, who comes into public school stadium next week. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some things that Bulldogs are going to have to work on this next week in preparing for Papa Bluff. Uh, the scoreboard is very lopsided, but it hasn't been that dismal of a showing on the Bulldogs. I think they've just they've been outmatched. Uh, some turnovers have hurt them. Kirkwood has taken advantage of most turnovers and turned them into touchdowns and points. But uh, the Bulldogs have fought hard and have played pretty well football. You know, one of the things that this could be, there's Bean, he cuts inside. He's still going as he comes across the 40-yard uh, line down to maybe the 39, uh, excuse me, the 34-yard uh, line. One of the things that this could do, uh, hopefully we would get in the playoffs, and if we should happen to see Kirkwood again, uh, a lot of times uh, they may be feeling that uh, – Ah, there's no team we can run over them where the it, Bulldogs have the idea that uh, we're going to show them this time. Yeah, overconfidence could be a factor if these two teams get together again. Bean takes it and comes wide this time. Uh, he's crossed. Uh oh, we've got a, uh, I believe it. Uh, face mask. Okay, Ron says that was a face mask call. That's what you would indicate there. Yeah, Wiggins, the ball carrier, was close <laughs> to picking up the first and ten. But with the penalty, that, uh, that'll probably put us in our deepest penetration down here, won't it? Yeah. Yes, that will most definitely. We've not seen anything on the other side of the 35 then, right? It, it almost had to be a face mask. There wasn't anybody else around no. <laughs> except Pioneers. So with two and a half, roughly two and a half minutes left, uh, Bulldogs. They're going the wrong way, way if they're marking it off minute. against Kirkwood. That must have been one of ours. Uh, Offensive holding. Mm. Said that's the way he got around the corner. Oh. <laughs> so that'll back the Bulldogs up to the 50-yard line. That'll make it a uh, second and about uh, 20 yards to go. As Carmody rolls to his right, throws that ball in the air, and it's going to wobble, and it's going to be intercepted as he tried to throw it into the wind. He's hit from he the back, go. and he's down as the interception goes all the way down to the 25, 24-yard line of the Bulldogs. And Carmody's back up. Run down by Wiggins on the tackle after the interception. Carmody slow getting up. Wiggins a little slow getting up. And, and Kirkwood takes over. With two, a little over two minutes left, the Pioneers come back with another chance at offense. As they'll start off from the uh, 25 of the Bulldogs.
Very new quarterback. quarterback. New quarterback, and number 11, play. Damon Patterson, a sophomore. So I guess the Kirkwood coach feels this one's in hand now. Yeah, maybe maybe the point system runs at a, at a certain <laughs> number. <laughs> well, you know, I would think hopefully they would do that, uh, that, you know, after a certain uh, number, you well, we've talked about it before points. when the Bulldogs have gotten ahead to, to put some reserves in to give some give them some game experience because you never know later on in the season when that uh, you're going to need those that, kids to come true. in and uh, they've had a little experience. Of course, this will be the second week in a row now that Kirkwood has shut out their opponent. So they beat uh, Parkwood South last week 27 zip and now tonight 42 to zip. So that shows uh, both sides, uh, potent offense and uh, good defense. Yes. I'm going to fool around. I'm going to have to put my coat on here <laughs> at the rate this wind's blowing. We're down to a little under a minute. Bulldogs are just trying to run out the clock here and now. Uh, keep them off the boards anymore as uh, the Pioneers are down to the 20-yard line to give to the 44, the ball carrier. That was a tailback. As they're running out of the eye now. Uh, we don't see a 44 listed there, if that's what it was. Well, having seen Kirkwood tonight, and they've been an awfully impressive pressing team, uh, I'm going to kind of follow them in the paper from week to week and just kind of watch and see what they do in the St. Louis area. That would also give them a good start when you, you know, they generally your rankings are a lot of the uh, newspaper people out of St. Louis area are media people uh, yeah I'm sure this this is going to catch the you know the attention of many people up there and particularly the the other eight opponents Sykeston I think has recovered the football with three seconds left what do you call now said uh, that's the wing in the prayer <laughs> with uh, three seconds left Bulldogs 42 zip uh, yeah we'd like to see one of those uh, fluke or non-fluke it doesn't make much difference just put us some points on the board well, they're going to start the clock and, and the dogs won't it. even get a chance uh, get a to chance to get play. it off so there's not much we can say about tonight's ball game can we george no simply outclassed tonight uh, by a good football team no doubt about that kirkwood is a fine football team both offensively and defensively so i think you know now it's, uh, it's a job of the coaching staff and the players just uh, to gear it up and hitch up the old belt and come back Monday and forget about this when this one's over. That's right. This and is yesterday. You, you've got to start thinking about the Popper Bluff Mules that are coming in here next week, and and you start anew. We're we're two and one after three, and uh, that's, that's a good start. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a respectable that's, start. In fact, uh, I'm sure Coach is glad at, of that record at this stage. Uh, you kind of hate to see this lopsided of a score, but uh, it just Kirkwood wasn't to be denied tonight, and. Uh, They've got a good football team. We, you know, we echo that again, and uh, it's just one of those things. At 42 to nothing, 7 to nothing, it's still a loss, right? That's right. That's okay. right. I'll give this to Ron. He, I think he's got some stats here totaled up for us. Okay. As we'll slow down to give Ron a chance here to give us the stats. and uh, Well, Jim, it's, it, it's as you all were talking about. It's just about as bad as it can be. Uh, uh, however, in the second half, <laughs> We might give the second half statistics and, and, and forget about the first half. Second <laughs> half, we did we did a little better. We ran the ball for 58 yards, no yards passing. I uh, think they threw the ball, looks like, about twice only in the, in the, in the second half, but uh, for no yards. Uh, Kirkwood, in the second half, however, came back, and they really threw the ball. They only gained 26 yards running, but they had, a, they had 82 yards throwing the ball, so... Uh, they end up with 270. The whole story is they end up with 279 yards. The dogs have 103 total offense. So it's uh, that was not quite three to one, but it gets close. The board tells it. Well, this is Jim Green for Ron James and George Hale. We'll see you next week as the dog takes on take on the Popper Bluff Mules.
cold front. Winds are from the north at speeds of 10 to 20 miles an hour. These northerly winds are bringing in quite cool temperatures. Much further north is an area of high pressure that is moving towards the south.